Annapurna, the 10th highest and most dangerous peak in the world. At 8,091 meters, it towers above Nepal's largest conservation area. And trekking to its base camp is a worthy and rewarding venture. This trek will take you on a breathtaking journey through remote villages, lush forests, pristine rivers, and towering peaks. If it's not already on your bucket list, it should be. This is the Annapurna Base Camp Trek. The flight from Kathmandu to Pokhara, or Pokhara to Kathmandu, is a breathtaking experience. This 30-minute flight may be short, but it offers astonishing views of the immense Himalayan mountains, rolling hills, winding rivers, and lush green forests. This will be your first glimpse of the magnificent mountains you will trek through in just a few days' time. The mountain ranges that are seen from the flight include the Langtang Range, Manaslu Range, Annapurna Range, and Dalagiri Range. If you are short on time or want the heart-stopping experience of a mountain flight through the Himalayas, this is definitely your best option. For those who prefer to keep their feet on the ground, a seven-hour bus ride is also available. This. After a beautiful drive in a tiny taxi, we began our trek in Nayapul. Even though the first part of our trek was on a dirt road, the scenery was breathtaking. Terraced gardens dotted the hillsides, and different shades of green peeked through every corner of the landscape. Life was everywhere. Donkeys on the trail, chickens and cows making noise, families cooking in their homes, and children dancing on the terrace. A huge part of the ABC track includes walking up and down thousands of rugged stone steps. These steps beautifully connect the charming villages throughout this region and frequently descend to the rushing river below. Tikedunga is where the true stair climbing begins. We felt refreshed after our lunch and confident in our ability to tackle this challenging section. Garov and our porter Ram decided to count the stone steps as we climbed from Tikedunga to Aliri. The total stair count for this section was about 3,450 steps straight up. This may sound torturous, but it was a strangely positive experience. We took breaks, laughed, and bonded all the way to the top. This staircase also offered many pull-offs to stop, stretch out your arms, and feel the cool breeze rush past. Reaching Aliri felt like a huge accomplishment, and we were grateful when our lovely tea house appeared over the horizon. We threw open the shutters of our small room and breathed in the mountain air. <laughs> Day two began with a bang as we tackled more stone steps leaving Aliri. The weather was gorgeous and the views continued to get better and better. Everything felt a bit easier than day one. Our bodies were getting used to the terrain, our muscles were warmed up, and we began to perfect our slow method of climbing the thousands of stone steps. The cooler temperature certainly made a difference as well. One of the best parts of this trek is the interaction with the local Nepalese villagers. These families have lived in their villages for thousands of years, and it's an honor to witness their beautiful way of life. On our way out of Valiri, 
a young Nepalese boy came onto his porch to say hello to us. When he saw Gaurav, he decided to jump on his back. They twirled and laughed. It was a sweet, unexpected moment that encompassed the sense of life and joy that we felt in every village. (laughs) A luxuriously long lunch break left us ready to tackle the rest of the day's hike. The total stair count up for this day was 3,943. Our guide, Ram, was always there to give us a pep talk or answer questions about the area. We were definitely in good hands. The after lunch portion was shorter than we had expected. We were excited to see that our final destination of Gorapani included a little town center area with some basic shops. We picked up another water bottle and a couple decks of cards. These would come in handy as we got closer to base camp. As we walked around Gorapani, we saw a mule train as well as some local boys playing a game of volleyball. It was tempting to join them. The views from our Gorapani tea house were stellar, and our room was at the tippy top of town. This place felt truly lavish. We continue to be blown away by the kind people in Nepal and the beautiful lives we see in the villages. I'm not going to lie. Waking up at 3.30 a.m. to hike up a bunch of stairs in the dark did not sound appealing. However, we would have been crazy to miss this. Poon Hill is so famous that it's actually many trekkers' main destination. Watching the sun kiss each majestic peak was unforgettable. There was even a coffee station perched atop Poon Hill, and we happily ordered two hot cocos. Because we woke up so early, We had the perfect amount of time to enjoy our views of the most amazing mountains in the world. A cute village dog recognized our relaxed vibe, and he crawled into Gaurav's lap to take a nap. This moment added a special touch to our lovely morning. After our sunrise Poon Hill hike, we had a lovely breakfast at our tea house. Food just hits different after so much morning hiking. Then there was no time to waste as we had another day of trekking to complete. The stone steps continued to an amazing viewpoint. After that, we hiked down to the river. When I say down, I mean down. Gaurav and I finally started to feel sore calves and quads, and we were grateful for the distracting waterfalls along the way. It was truly beautiful. After reaching the very bottom of the day's hike and the river, we started to feel raindrops. We prepared for the worst and hoped to reach our tea house before the thunder turned into rain. We pushed up one last steep ascent, and arrived at our destination just as the rain began. A hailstorm shortly followed, and we watched from the comfort of our tea house room. All in all, it was a great day. One day closer to Annapurna Base Camp. Day four was hard. We were still feeling sleep deprived from the Sunrise Poon Hill hike, which was totally worth it, and the heat didn't help. This was the first day we truly suffered and silently wondered why exactly we had decided to do this trek. In the end, 
A half day of rest and amazing mountain views were all we needed to remember. The day began with a breathtaking sunrise over the mountains in Tadapani. After a delicious breakfast, we embarked on our rest day hike, (laughs) which would allow for an early arrival at our tea house for lots of rest. Even though the hike was relatively short, the sun beat down relentlessly, so the day definitely felt long. The scenery featured bright green farms, rolling hills, and snow-peaked mountains. Participants in the annual Annapurna Marathon were also running the same trail that we were hiking, and it was incredibly inspiring. It was a special experience to cheer on these amazing athletes as they passed. Overall, it was a rough but very doable day. It's all a part of the journey. Garov and I were super nervous for this long day, especially because we were so tired from our hike the day before. We had gone to bed very early and were so relieved to wake up feeling completely rested. We couldn't believe that we were so refreshed. The sun shone down over the mountains and we had the dreamiest breakfast looking at the greatest mountains in the world. I ordered the American breakfast, and Garav ordered the Indian breakfast. It truly felt like a paradise. As we began our fifth day of trekking, we still couldn't believe the immense beauty that surrounded us. This was the best day of trekking yet, and the lush greenery offered plenty of shady moments. Spirits were up, and we laughed and smiled our way through the morning. The hike to Himalaya Hotel was amazing. This was our largest elevation gain yet, but we hiked through green forests that provided shade and immense beauty. The hike began with a long downhill portion. Our hiking poles saved our knees, and we took everything slowly. After this downhill section, we climbed steadily up once again, This was our favorite day of trekking yet. We encountered dizzying suspension bridges, which were my favorite. Crazy mountain views jutting up from the landscape, rushing water at the river, and the best, according to Garov, Dalbat to date in bamboo. We even witnessed a thrilling waterfall right before arriving at our tea house in Himalaya. We have started to see the same people at each tea house, and the camaraderie is fantastic. Eating dinner together, playing the Nepalese card game (laughs) Dumal, sharing stories and laughing makes the experience even sweeter. Our next stop is Annapurna Base Camp, and it's hard to believe that the views are going to get even better. This was the big day. After five days of trekking through the Himalayas, we would finally stand at the base of the 10th highest and most dangerous peak in the world. Our time at Himalaya Hotel was great. 
It's so fun to make friends and build community throughout the trek. There are people from all corners of the world, different languages, amazing cultures, and yet everyone shares a common goal. Once again, Garav and I slept like babies. We woke up feeling refreshed and ready to tackle a challenging day of trekking. Today's trek took us up, up, up. We climbed 4,139 feet slowly and steadily and stopped for lunch at MBC. Right about this time, fog began to roll through the valley. The mountains towered on all sides of us throughout our entire day. Everything felt more rugged and maybe even a bit more dangerous as we climbed higher and higher. We were instructed to move quickly through a dangerous avalanche area. At one point, an avalanche already blocked the trail, so we had to blaze a path through slippery, steep snow. Ram, our guide, led the way, and we felt safe with him showing us the best route through. We continued to climb through wind and rain, and the altitude began to slow us down just a little. When Annapurna Base Camp came into view, we knew we would make it. This trek is the most physically challenging endeavor we've ever experienced. But it has also been culturally rich, awe-inspiring, and life-affirming. Tomorrow, we will wake up in ABC and enjoy the most beautiful scenery in the world. Day 7 began with the sunrise at Annapurna Base Camp. We were sad to see clouds in the sky, but we still walked to the lookout point in hopes that the weather would clear. A dozen or so other trekkers had the same idea, and we waited together as the clouds shifted around the mountains. Even in the clouds, the scenery and crisp mountain air were invigorating. Our patience was rewarded. And within a couple of hours, the clouds began to reveal the beautiful peaks. I don't really have the words to describe the experience. It was something akin to feeling the smallness of humanity next to the vastness of nature. Photos can't do it justice. I will never forget how it felt. After reveling in the scenery and enjoying a slow breakfast... We started trekking down around 9.30. We hiked down 6,472 feet. I felt the pressure on my knees build as we again crossed bridges and moved through the avalanche zone. We enjoyed a much-needed lunch break in Durali before passing through more villages and forest paths. Bamboo branches lined the path as we finally entered the aptly named village of Bamboo. We had been here just a couple of days before. It was fun to be back and to celebrate our achievement. It was a long journey, and a bit of a celebration commenced. We enjoyed many rounds of dumal with our guide, porter, and trekking friends. It was a night of camaraderie, friendship, and accomplishment. I still can't believe we did it. This was our last day of legitimate trekking. Unfortunately, it was a hot one. Most of today's hike took us down, but there were a couple steep uphill sections, most notably the staircase up to Chamrong, where we had lunch. This was a doozy, and the sun blazed down on us. But hey, we had made it all the way to ABC. We could certainly do this. Lunch was delicious, and we took time to rest and rehydrate. Today, Garav and I started to feel some pain in our knees and back. I don't know if our bodies were just worn out, or if the closeness of the finish line gave us permission to finally feel the aches and pains. Regardless, it was a challenging day. But not without the same beautiful scenery, charming villages, and animal sightings we had come to expect. 
Once we arrived in Jinu, we made the 20 minute trek down to the hot springs. I was a little cranky from the day, but I pushed through, and it was well worth it. We sat in the warm water for three hours. Rain fell, our friends joined, and our muscles relaxed. It was the perfect end to a long day. Day nine was the final bit of our trek. We only hiked for about an hour. However, this included a super long suspension bridge. This was definitely a highlight, and we took our time enjoying the view from the swaying, beautiful, exciting bridge. I loved it. On the other side of the bridge, we hopped into a jeep to head back to Pokhara. I can't explain the joy of feeling AC in our hotel room and taking a long, hot shower. We were lucky enough to arrive around lunchtime. This meant we could enjoy beautiful Pokhara all day and evening. And boy, did we enjoy it. I'm still processing what this trek meant to me. I knew it would be amazing, but it was so much more. <laughs>